Accurate conversion tracking is a huge cornerstone to seeing success in PPC advertising. We want to make sure that we have the conversions populating in the campaign's interface so we can know what's working well, what's not working, and make adjustments to see the best performance out of those campaigns we can. That's part of the reason that on this channel we put together so many videos showing you how to install the Pixel and set up conversion tracking for a lot of different advertising platforms because it is just that integral to seeing success. But those videos just show you the initial setup. Let's say down the line you want to go through and check and make sure that everything's working or you have new goals you've set up and you want to double check that those are firing properly or maybe you're just not seeing the metrics in the right way or that you think you should be seeing in the platform. So today what I want to run through are a number of free tools. Some are platform specific, some not so much, that will help you double check your pixel integration and your conversion tracking setup to make sure everything is firing properly so you can get the accurate trustworthy data in the advertising advertising platforms and optimize accordingly. As we're going through each of these tools, it's important to talk about the types of conversion tracking we can set up. Depending on the platform you're using, there are three separate ways that you can track conversions. So I want to talk about those first. And as we're going through each of the tools, I'm going to try and articulate how each of those is going to populate in the tools that we're going to use. The first type of tracking is really only specific to Google Ads at this point. Some other platforms used to have this option, but now it's really only Google. And that's when you create a new code snippet for each each conversion action. When you're in the Google Ads interface, it will tell you, as you can see in the upper left here, the second action of creating a new conversion action is to set up the tag. Each time you create a new conversion, you have to have an entirely new conversion tag snippet of code to add onto your website. So that's one type of tracking we're going to need to look for and make sure that we've got that squared away with the tools. The second type is utilizing URL rules. Most platforms that we use nowadays will have what's called a universal pixel that will go on every page of your website. Then within the platform, you can create conversion actions using either a contains or equals type of URL rule, saying that every time somebody hits a page that the URL contains thank you or something along those lines, that's the conversion that you want to track. Most types of platforms have that. The example I have here is for Microsoft Ads. So again, you can use a destination URL because you're utilizing the Bing Ads, even though now it's Microsoft, the Bing Ads UET pixel on your site. The last type of conversion tracking is when you use custom events. You change the pixel a little bit to fire a specific custom event on individual pages on your website. The image we have here on the left shows that you can use that URL rule, just like we showed for Microsoft. And in Microsoft, you can also set up custom events. But on the right, we have the custom event setup. You can utilize either the standard events that you can see here for view content, add to cart, search. And if you were to scroll down here, if there were custom events that you had on the Facebook pixel, you could also choose from those as well. So with those three types of categories, we need to make sure that we are looking for each of those in a specific way, because the tools that we have available are going to populate the data differently. And we want to make sure that we are getting an accurate reading of whether our conversion tracking is working or not. So what we're going to do is go through three specific ways that you can check to see if your conversion tracking and the pixel itself is firing properly on the website. The first way we're going to do this is through manual checks. This is what we used to have to do back in the day before there were a lot of really easy options and tools to help us check this stuff in a much quicker fashion. This is going to be the best option if you had to hard code the conversion snippet onto your website. You did not use anything like Google Tag Manager or any additional type of container to house your pixel. And this is best if you really only need to check one or two pages because it does take a couple of steps and it can be pretty tedious if you have lots of pages to check. So now let's hop into what an example of this manual check will look like with an account that I work with that I know is going to fire the right pixels. I've gone ahead and submitted a test lead on this site, and now I'm on the thank you page. I'm sorry that a lot of it is blurred out, but you just don't need to know who this is. So what we're going to do for this first manual option is to right click anywhere on the page, and you're going to see a number of these different options show up. What we're going to do is scroll down to view page source. That will then open a second tab. You'll keep your tab available for the thank you page. That one's not going anywhere, but it'll open up a page that looks like this. And it just has all the code that built the thank you page that you have available. There is going to be a ton of information on this page, and a lot of it is completely useless to you. So what I highly encourage you to do is to utilize the find or search function on your browser. So for me on a Mac, that's just command F, and it's going to populate this little search window. 
So now what I can do is search for a string of characters that I know is gonna populate the pixel that I wanna find. So the first thing I can do, we can already see it here on the page, is that there is Google Analytics set up on the site. So if I wanted to find that, I could easily search for Google and it'll highlight where that Google Analytics integration is. So you can see that pretty easily and really easy way to troubleshoot if that pixel is set up properly. But depending on what you're searching for, you might need to put in something different. I happen to know that there is a Google Tag Manager integration on this page. So a number of the pixels that we wanna see are not gonna pop up, but there is a custom Facebook event on this page that is separate from Google Tag Manager that we can find. So what I'm gonna do here is search for FBQ and it's gonna populate the track that we wanna see. Now we can see down over here that it's highlighted FBQ because that's how you set up a custom event. And you can see that the script for FBQ track lead is gonna populate. If you'll remember from the Facebook pixel video where we set up some custom event conversion actions, this just means that there's a standard event for lead set up on this page. This is only the custom event code. You would also need to make sure that the base pixel for Facebook is also on the page. But again, that's not gonna populate in this specific example because I happen to know that this website utilizes Google Tag Manager and that's where that lives. But this is the way that you would try to find your conversion action if you wanted to do it manually. And it's a really easy way to find it for, again, one, two, maybe three pages that you want to check. But obviously this is a little bit tedious. You can kind of tell that it took a little bit to get here and it seems a little bit goofy to have to do this for everything. If we want to find things a little bit quicker, we can use the second type of conversion tracking check that we have available. The second way we can check our conversion tracking is to utilize a tag assistant. These are gonna be really useful if you are trying to check a number of pages for the manual codes that we just talked about. It's also really useful if you wanna find information that is specific to that channel. If you have a pixel that is customized to some degree through custom events or anything like that, these types of tools will give you a lot more insight into what you're gonna be able to track in the pixel and what's firing and if there are any issues with it. Now, as a disclaimer, all of the tag assistants that I'm going to look through today are from the Google Chrome extension store. There are a handful of other browsers out there, whether you're using Firefox, Safari, Microsoft Edge, whatever it is, but a lot of them don't have nearly the number of tag assistants that are available. So if you want to have the most robust list of channel tag assistants to choose from, I highly suggest that you just download Chrome, even if it's only to check these different pieces, because there are so many different options. Using the same website as an example, this time I'm going to start with the landing page because I want you to see how this changes as we go from landing page to thank you page. A lot of this is blurred out, but I've added in Google Tag Assistant, Bing's UET Tag Helper, and Facebook's Pixel Helper to my Chrome view so I can start to troubleshoot our pixel integrations. Those are gonna live up here in these pinned extension sections. So this first one is gonna be for Google Tag Assistant. So let's open that up. And this is what it's gonna look like. It'll show you the tags that fired on this landing page when it loaded. So here you can see there's a remarketing, Google Analytics, and Google Tag Manager tag. You can see that they have IDs below them. I'm sorry they're blurred out, but you can see those IDs below them so you can double check against the numbers that you need them to be. It's also pretty clear that two of these have a green little smiley face and one has a yellow kind of goofy tongue hanging out thing. That just means that the two with the green smiley face, these are set up exactly how Google suggests them to be. And the one with the yellow tag next to it has something that is a little non-standard to it. So if we wanna check what that is, we can come down here. We can click on this carrot here and it'll open up the information about this Google Analytics tag that's a little bit silly. You can see down here that it says that the same web property ID is tracked twice. There's some sort of double tagging setup here, so this will help us know that maybe we need to change something and get that second tracked ID off of there to make sure it's a standard setup. As we go through this, there's gonna be a couple other examples I'll show you where there is a blue option as well, which means that there is some sort of data missing or something is non-standard for this tag to show up as. There's also a red option, which means that something is broken. And I'll show you what each of those looks like, just so you'll have an idea if you come across it, that's what it's gonna be. 
Second, we can look at the Bing UET tag helper. That's gonna be this one right here. As we open that up, you can see that it shows us our tag ID. It then also shows the page load event because you can check out either the event or the tracking code itself to make sure that it's there. For each of these page load events, you can come down to the bottom and see this parameter details. You can open this up and you can see that the event type is page load. There's some other information in here as well, but there is a decent amount of Bing slash Microsoft advertising specific information that you can check out through this UET tag helper that can be really impactful, that is a bit more easy to digest than it would be if you just went to the view source portion of the page. Lastly, looking at the Facebook pixel helper, that's this one right here, similar to the Bing UET tag helper. This one also shows us the pixel ID, and then it shows us that it is firing a page view event you can click the arrow next to it and see a lot more information about that specific page view event that fired for the Facebook pixel. So now we know what the information on the landing page looks like. And depending on how you're tracking your conversions, it's important to know what the landing page looks like versus the thank you page. So now let's hop into the thank you page that we were on earlier and see what the tags look like there. Now we can see that things look a little bit different to start. We've got Google Tag Assistant now has a five in that number. Bing has a two. Facebook still has a one. So let's hop into Google first. Now we can see that there are five tags in total. The remarketing, Google Analytics, and Tag Manager tags are still in place. But now we see two Google Ads conversion tracking tags on this page as well. They each have different account IDs because the number that is here is based on the account. But if you wanna check to make sure that your specific conversion action is tracking properly, maybe you think that it's this green one, you can open it up. And now you can check the conversion label as well as the conversion value to ensure that everything is set up properly. If on the other hand, the right conversion label that you were looking for is actually in this blue conversion tracking code, it might mean that there's something wrong with what's set up. But again, this just says a conversion value is not set. So it says not set here. Whereas the other one said zero, which is in some ways the same thing as not being set. The alerts that are on here might be really big deals. They might not be a big deal at all, but at least now you know what a blue version looks like when Google is trying to flag something for you to check out. Now let's check out the Bing setup on this page. This is why it's helpful to know what the landing page looked like. We still see that page load event that we had there and there are parameters down here, but now there's a custom event that's set up above. And if we open the parameters here, we can see that we have a event category of demo and event action of form submission. Since we are tracking things through a custom event for Microsoft only, on this page, this is what it's gonna look like. You can come in here, make sure that your event category, action, the type, the value, all of this stuff is set up properly and make sure that it's firing accurately. On the other hand, if you were using a URL rule for this thank you page in Bing, you would not see this custom event set up at the top. The only piece you would see would be this page load event. And that would effectively tell you that your conversion tracking should work properly because the URL rule within your conversion action should fire because your UET tag is on the page. If you are using URL rules based on either the URL contains thank you or whatever parameters are there, you will not see a custom event set up up here because you're not using events to track things. Lastly, let's take a look at Facebook. And this is effectively what it would look like if you're using that URL rule I just talked about. This is the same view of what we saw on the thank you page. We still see the pixel ID, the page view that's there. If we open that up, all of that information is gonna be the same, but it just shows that the page view fired, which means that your pixel is on the page and tracking properly because it's got that green check mark next to it. So effectively, if you're using URL rules like we would be for this specific example, this lets me know that everything should be tracking properly. And if we're not seeing conversions come through, there's likely a different reason for that as opposed to the pixel not being set up properly. The last option for checking your conversion tracking is going to be only usable if you're utilizing Google Tag Manager, and that's utilizing preview mode within Google Tag Manager. This tool is extremely helpful. It allows you to troubleshoot all of the different tags that are firing on all of your different pages, whether they are conversion tags or not. It allows you to find a lot of really useful information. And quite frankly, this is one of the reasons that we suggest that people use Google Tag Manager in the first place is because it makes everything really easy to troubleshoot if something is not going right. And it helps to standardize a lot of the pixel setup, conversion tracking setup, all that good stuff across all of the advertising platforms that you're using. So it can be controlled in one area, just makes it a lot easier to troubleshoot. So let's hop in and see what preview mode looks like. In Google Tag Manager, the first thing we need to do is activate preview mode for whatever page you're looking at. This is just a placeholder account 
but we have admin access to this because we created it. We get to do whatever we want with it. On the workspace tab, it's pretty easy to find the preview button is up here. Depending on the access that you have, it might not show up here. So I do want to show you a different way to get there that'll do the exact same thing. But if you have admin access to the Google Tag Manager container you're trying to check, all you need to do is click this preview button right here. If you don't have that access level or for some reason this preview button isn't populating here, head over to versions. And depending on the interface that Google Tag Manager gives you, there will either be a set of three dots right up here, not this set, but right down here, or you can come down to the specific version that you're looking for. Usually you need to check the live and latest version that you have here and click these three dots and then click preview. The page will reload and this versions page will look the same as it did. But if you head back up to the workspace page, You'll now see this big orange bar up at the top that tells you that you're now previewing the version of your Google Tag Manager container that you just opted into preview. So what you'll do is open a new tab within your browser, go to the website you want to check, and the preview mode will pop up. We'll show what that looks like here in just a second. The only other thing I want to tell you is that when you are done in preview mode, please head back and click leave preview mode because there are a couple things you need to do. First of all, that preview mode can be really annoying if you're just trying to visit the website and utilize the website itself. Second, if you publish additional versions of the website, so right now you can see we're on version five, if you end up publishing version six, seven, eight, whatever it is of your Google Tag Manager container and you've made changes to your tag itself, you are still stuck previewing version five. So if you go back to that website and you're using the same preview session, you're going to be troubleshooting version five of Google Tag Manager and not the most recent version. This is just a PSA to say, when you are finished with previewing your ads, please go to leave preview mode and make sure that you're not still in preview mode for Google Tag Manager. Okay, now that I've gotten off my high horse about Google Tag Manager and preview mode, I wanna show you what it looks like. So we're going back to that same example that we had, and this is what it will look like. We're on the landing page, but this section down here at the bottom is gonna populate all the information about your Tag Manager container that you have active. It'll show you a summary of the actions that people are taking on the website. You can see the tags, you can see variables, data layers, any errors that you have. So you can double check a lot of that information. But the most useful part, and really the only part I wanna talk about right now is this summary down here that shows tags fired and tags not fired. So here you can see that there is AdWords remarketing, conversion linker, couple other things that are in place that are firing on this page just when the landing page loaded. But there are a handful of tags down here that did not fire. Demo request, contact us for AdWords, Bing, a number of different actions that are down here. One thing that I do wanna note is that you can see that this Facebook pixel, the custom HTML is paused. So when we go to this thank you page, Facebook is not gonna pop up because for some pretty specific reasons, we have the Facebook pixel paused currently on this thank you page. Looking again at the same thank you page that we had running earlier, this is how easy Google Tag Manager preview mode is. And again, this is why we encourage people to use Google Tag Manager, because now we can see that the AdWords remarketing pixel, conversion linker, all these other things are still in place. But now we also have the AdWords demo request, the Bing demo request, LinkedIn demo request, and we know that those are firing on this page. Basically what Tag Manager preview mode does is every time you go to a new page, this summary down here will show you what tags were fired, which ones weren't to help you troubleshoot why things are tracking properly, why they aren't, and maybe what changes you need to make based on what you're trying to track in the platforms. So obviously this is probably the easiest option that we have out of the different types of conversion tracking checks, but hopefully between either the manual reviews, the individual channel tag assistance, or this Google Tag Manager preview mode. This will help you figure out how to accurately test and make sure that your conversion tracking is working properly or even any other pixels on your website, whether they're for paid advertising or not. Thanks for watching our video. If you thought it was useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week. So if you want to get notified of when a new one comes out, be sure to subscribe to the Paid Media Pros channel.